Lonzo and Caruso still being out may be killing Shy towns defensive wall, but having Troy Brown Jr., Javante Green, and Ayo Dosumu, a few high IQ, lengthy, and switchable perimeter stoppers who have at least a 33-inch vertical jump, has helped keep the Bulls as the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Here's how the Chicago Bulls officially created a monster wing rotation, and whether or not their two-way forward depth can help fans in the Windy City witness a deep 2022 playoff run. Right quick, only 12.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single video. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. A win's a win at the end of the day, and we'll get to the positives mentioned in the intro. However, giving up 115 points on 49.5% shooting from the field and 12 of 27 from three to a skeleton crew Pacers team just proves how much Chicago's missing two primary backcourt defenders. Billy Donovan's team has now allowed 100 points in 12 of their last 13 games and slipped to number 19 in defensive rating. In 41 games combined without Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball, the Bulls ranked dead last, directly behind the Houston Rockets, with a 115.8 defensive rating. Conversely, in 63 games combined with Alex and Lonzo on the court, the Bulls' defense catapults to 14th best, which puts them one spot ahead of my Toronto Raptors. So the questions are, how is the Bulls' combined record without Caruso and Lonzo at a solid 25 and 16? And secondly, missing their two top backcourt defenders for such a prolonged stretch, how are they still 14 games over 500 at 33 and 19, sitting atop the East? That's because minus Zoe and the Bald Mamba, the team's offense has sky risen to a league best 116.05, meaning the trio in Levine, Debo, and Vooch have even further increased their bucket getting prowess without two primary playmakers. The perimeter trio on today's thumbnail in Troy Brown Jr., Ayo Dosumu, and Javante Green haven't been as valuable in the advanced stats as Caruso and Lonzo given they're built physically like wing players and not guards and are being tasked with defending much smaller players. But that doesn't mean they haven't made timely lockdown efforts, along with energetic hustle plays that swing momentum. Also, TBJ, Io, and even Javante at times are capable of letting it fly from deep, which keeps the floor spaced for the big three. Brown Jr. was the Washington Wizards' 15th overall pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, and since being acquired by GM Mark Eversley and the Bulls last summer, TBJ's proved to be an excellent two-way option. Known for his mix of reach and lateral quickness defensively, Brown's putting up solid numbers on that end of the floor this season, posting a career-best .6 defensive box plus minus, and his best steal percentage since 2019-20 at 2.2. It's also worth noting that Brown's putting up the best defensive rating of his career at 109. Offensively, Brown has shown the ability to take pressure off Shy towns top shot creators at times. Right here, as Debo's smothered by Okiki at the top of the key, he's forced to give it up, but luckily TBJ's right there as an outlet on the left wing. Showing zero panic, Troy fakes like he's going to toss it inside with his eye contact and body language, before showing off a hesitation crossover dribble, which gets him the extra step on T. Ross, who still does a nice job contesting the shot. But who knew, the former 15th overall pick Troy Brown Jr. had this kind of polished finishing ability as well as poise off the dribble. In his fourth pro season at age 22 years old, it's those plays which prove there's still some untapped potential with the 6'6", 215-pound wing, the product of the University of Oregon in Troy Brown Jr. We went in depth on Ayo Dosumu in this video a few days ago, that's linked in the description, go watch that after this. But down the stretch against the Indiana Pacers on Friday night, the rookie phenom took advantage of a perfectly spaced out Chicago offense right here with a chance to put the game away. Up 118-115 with the seconds going down, Dosumu calmly handled the rock on the right wing with a sense of confidence and conviction, almost as if to say, I got this. Resembling the typical closer in DeMar, Io took on the ISO without requiring a screen, elusively and swiftly, the former fighting Illini then explodes using a momentum crossover with O'Shea Brissett, allowing him to get a full head of steam, and the rest is history. Sumu on the drive! Oh. Sumu! Oh. Dagger! 
In 13 games as a starter, Dosumu is averaging 11.8 points in 37.7 minutes per game, shooting 56% from the field and nearly 44% from distance. As one of the primary passers over that span, Ayo's posted 3.35 assists to every turnover. But Dosumu's calling card and what's needed in this starting lineup, especially without Ball and Caruso, is point of attack defense. And last week, B-Ball Index rated Dosumu the best in the league at their on-ball defensive metric among players with 500 plus minutes played and in the top 10% in matchup difficulty. Don't forget, when guarded by Ayo against the Bulls, all-star starting point guard Trey Young had just two points, two assists on 0 of 5 from the field and 0 of 2 from deep, with an unorthodox set shot that definitely needs its fair share of time and space to deliver. Ayo's converted 42% of his threes so far as a bull, albeit on just two three-point attempts per game. Along with that low volume from deep, his 60.5% mark from the free throw line in college makes whether or not he can continue at such a high rate fairly questionable. Eventually, you'd like Dosumu adding a pull-up three, but it's noteworthy that he's already capable of making in-between shots so seamlessly. According to Cleaning the Glass, Dosumu's shooting 52% on long twos and 56% from floater range, which are insane numbers. On the other end, fighting through big bodies, Ayo's impossible to make contact with and legitimately pin down to set a screen on. The screen is seemingly set with Ayo heading right for it, but like magic, Dosumu somehow dodges it. Part of that is attributed to his wiry frame, but the kid also has tremendous instincts, and that hustle simply can't be taught. Ayo's poster dunk came after the Pacers made one last charge into the game after it looked like Chicago had put them away. Just minutes earlier, an Ayo triple put Chicago up 12 points with just under 5 minutes left. However, the Bulls found themselves only ahead by 4 with less than a minute to go. With their defense struggling, especially when it came to containing Karis Levert, they needed some good offensive looks down the stretch. Vucevic came up massive with a bucket off a dish from Ayo to make it a six-point game, but the Bulls suffered another defensive breakdown and gave up a wide-open three-pointer to Justin Holiday, cutting their lead down to three. Chicago still needed one more bucket to put the game away, and that's when Ayo went to work. One thing I didn't mention in the breakdown of his dunk is that it seemed like he was going to give the ball over to DeMar DeRozan at the top of the arc, but of course, instead he drove into the lane and proceeded to rise up and slam down a thunderous dunk over two pacers. It was the perfect exclamation point on a hard-fought road win. Once again, starting at the point guard spot, Dosumu had a double-double with 15 points and a career-high 14 dimes. Ayo's improvement in his playmaking has really been on display as of late with his increase in assist numbers. It'll be great for Chicago moving forward if Ayo can keep getting better all around offensively while also being a solid perimeter defender. Vucevic continues to light it up offensively for Chicago in this recent stretch of games. He put up a stat line of 36, 17, and 4 while going 16 of 21 from the field. Against a Pacers team that went small for most of the night, Vucevic was able to get any shot he wanted from the post. Chicago found the mismatch early and kept feeding him the rock all game. He was also a force inside with three blocks in the span of about a minute in the fourth quarter. DeMar DeRozan also had another marvelous night offensively, scoring 31 points to go along with seven dimes. Javante Green added 16 on 7 for 10 shooting in two blocks. Troy Brown Jr. was a game-high plus 17 while tallying nine points and six boards. What's the biggest positive you can take from Chicago's recent performances? Best answer in the comments down below gets next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo, who says the most intimidating part about the Warriors is really how deep the team is offensively and defensively. The Warriors aren't a super team like the Nets, but they have a very capable superstar that can lead them to the title in Stephen Curry. Thanks for every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.